Frontier Fighters. Frontier Fighters, inspiring chapters of heroism and valor in the winning of the American West. When America concluded the Louisiana Purchase, no one knew precisely where the dividing line ran between the newly acquired territory and the Spanish provinces. So to avoid a possible boundary dispute, Lieutenant Zebulon Montgomery Pike, ambitious, patriotic, courageous, was ordered into the Southwest to secure definite information. Pike's command was insignificant. It consisted of but 20 men. Two lieutenants, a civilian surgeon, Dr. Johnson, a sergeant, and 16 privates. Pike left St. Louis on July 15, 1806. Late that fall, near Red Cloud in Webster County, Nebraska... Sergeant. Here, sir. Notice anything peculiar about this trail? Yes, sir. Been cavalry on this road. Foot soldiers, too. Recent. Military, eh? Yes, sir. Spanish. Here's a piece of leather, one the men found, two miles back. Give it to me. Here, sir. Hmm. Sergeant, how many would you judge are in the party? About 100 horse and 400 foot. Dr. Johnson. Yes, Lieutenant. There are Spanish troops in this vicinity, 500. What do you propose to do? Engage them, of course. Drive them out. But 21 Americans against 500 invaders? This is your first assignment to an American army detachment. You have much to learn, Doctor. Much to learn. Forward! Forward! But Pike did not meet the invaders. Instead, on August 12th... You there! Under that war bonnet! What tribe is this? We are Pawnees. Who is chief of this village? Me, Thunderbird. Those strange banners of red and gold, whence come they? Presents from Spanish chief of South. Thunderbird? This land is now governed by the great white chief of the East. I have so heard. He is my chief. I obey him. You, in turn, obey me. Mm. If I allow you to keep the red and gold gift banners, will you plant my chief's banner of red, white, and blue among them? Yes. Sergeant, the detachment flag. Here it is, sir. Accept this banner, Thunderbird, and mark well that you plant it higher than the banners of red and gold. And keep it there! Weary, ragged, starving, low in spirits but high in resolve, Pike's detachment is camped on the south bank of the Arkansas River, near what is now Pueblo, Colorado. Look, Dr. Johnson, in the sky to my right. You mean that small blue cloud? That's no cloud, Doctor. From my chart, I find that's an undiscovered mountain peak, and I propose to climb to its top. With the skins of wild animals laced to their bleeding feet and their regimentals in rags... Pike and his officers begin their perilous climb toward the summit of the peak, more than 14,000 feet above sea level. This is madness, Pike. Why waste your strength? You'll need it later. You doctors, Uh, why must soldiers always be pestered by medical men? You'll find out when we reach the top of this peak, if we ever reach the top. We'll reach it. 
Never fear. Pike never reached the top of the peak, which was later to be named in his honor. After crawling up the sheer walls but a few miles, Pike, suffering intensely from privation, hunger, and exposure to the elements, was on the verge of complete collapse. On Dr. Johnson's strict orders, Pike returned to camp. Winter. Bitter, rocky mountain winter. Without shelter, in deep snow, without food. January 19th. The expedition had not tasted food for four terrible days. How are the men, Doctor? Well, four will die in a few hours, Lieutenant, unless they have nourishment. Doctor, I'm going hunting for buffalo. Uh, there's no buffalo in these mountains. Place your ears to the ground like I'm doing. You're right, Lieutenant. There they come, over that ridge. Your rifle, Sergeant. Here, Lieutenant. Every man lie low. I'll pick off as many as I can as they pass by. One. Two. Three. Enough meat for a few days at least. Let's go, Sergeant, for some buffalo steaks and some warm skins to keep those men from freezing to death. Leaving behind those of his soldiers too exhausted to travel... Pike, with Dr. Johnson, one lieutenant, and nine enlisted men broke out of the mountains. After incredible hardships and suffering almost beyond human endurance, Pike's slender command arrived at the Rio Grande at its junction with the Conejo. In a little fort, Pike, an invader himself now in a foreign land, summons Dr. Johnson. You sent for me, Lieutenant Pike? I have a little commercial matter which I want to have you adjust. In Santa Fe. But, sir, I'm a doctor, not a bill collector. Dr. Johnson, you're going to Santa Fe to straighten up this money matter. You're also going to collect information for the Army. Shall I keep notes? Naturally, but guard them well. We're going to have action down this way soon. And then the Army is going to need all the information it can lay its hands on. February 26, 1807. Pike's detachment of nine ragged privates stands at attention at the entrance to Pike's tiny fort as the Spaniards ride up to a halt. Present! Welcome to the United States, sir. You and your gallant dragoon. <laughs> How droll! The United States, indeed. But you are in the United States. That's the Red River, and the Red River is in American territory. Senors, it is not the Red River, but the Rio Grande. And I, Don Bartholomew Fernandez, place you and your little scarecrow army under military arrest. Arrest? Yes, your sword, sir. This is an outrage. But I'm outnumbered 50 to 1. So here's my sword. Don't cut yourself with it. I shaved myself with it this morning. <laughs> Pike and his scarecrows were marched to Santa Fe, where the commander was at once taken before Governor Allen Custer, who invited the invading American officer to dinner. And uh, how do you like our Spanish food, Senor Pike? Fine, Your Excellency. A trifle hot, perhaps, but filling, especially these beans. <laughs> yes. Uh, Senor Pike, your armed invasion is a serious offense against Spain, a grave offense. What do you propose to do with me? Feed me, and then hang me? What a queer sense of humor you Americanos have. Certainly not. Splendid. I prefer shooting. More military. I am neither going to hang you nor shoot you. Tomorrow I am sending you and your men to Chihuahua, where General Salcedo will dispose of your case. <laughs> yes, yeah. General will certainly dispose of your case. <laughs> <laughs> Still guarded by Don Fernandez and his dragoons, Pike and his men were marched into the valley of the Rio Grande. The Americans were treated with every courtesy, but Pike's scarecrows were not in a receptive mood. Every mile, it seemed, brought them nearer their doom. It is siesta time near Atrisco. Nice country, Lieutenant. But how can one enjoy it going to one's own funeral? There will be no funerals, Lieutenant. And what do you mean? If they intended to shoot us... Santa Fe had plenty of walls to stand us against. But this long march to Chihuahua. Lieutenant, this maneuver has a deep political significance. 
eventually we'll all be released. So keep your eyes and ears open. And remember everything you see and hear. I anticipated everything that has occurred so far. Then you purposely allowed yourself to be captured? Of course. To get some first-hand knowledge of the people, their aims, and anything else of value. In the event of a war between our country and theirs. Don Fernandez was relieved by Don Fasunda Melchares, the same officer who penetrated Nebraska and presented the Pawnees with the red and gold banners of Spain. Melchares' hospitality exceeded that of Fernandez. The prisoners were suspicious of the display, all but Pike. He foresaw his destiny. A few weeks later in Chihuahua, headquarters of General Salcedo. The prisoner Pike, Excellency. Escort him in. This way, prisoner. General Salcedo, I stand to your command. Well spoken, senor lieutenant. Pray be seated. Thank you, Excellency. How do you like our jail, senor Pike? As jails go, not bad. You may erase it from your memory. Our execution, then, will take place at once. Execution? (laughs) Absurd. I'm sending you and your men home tomorrow. Then why march us way down here to Chihuahua? Entertain us like kings on the way, then march us back. Orderly. See, Excellency? Outside. Close the door. Senor Pike, as one soldier to another, have I your word? You have my word, Excellency. Senor Pike, Mexico is preparing to throw off the yoke of Spanish tyranny. We count on our northern New World brothers to help us with troops and brave officers like yourself. Your compliments honor me, Your Excellency. So, when we invite your country's participation in our war of liberation from Spain, I trust you will remember and repeat to your superiors that we are a civilized people and not savages as our detractors have painted us. Am I understood? Yes, Your Excellency. Then you will cooperate when the hour strikes? Your Excellency, I am an American officer, a soldier. When the time comes that my nation shall join hands with yours in the conflict that you so eloquently predict, I will obey my president's orders and none other. Again, well spoken, Senor Pike. Now a toast. To the President of the United States. To the King of Spain. (laughs) To be sure, to the King of Spain. And... To the President of the United States. The commercial, political, and military information Lieutenant Pike brought back to the United States was of immense value. And to this gallant and fearless officer's reports can be traced directly the beginning of the Santa Fe trade, which proved so rich for early Western American enterprise. The ashes of their campfires have long since grown cold. Time has obliterated their trails. But the great deeds of the frontier fighters will never fade from the glorious pages of American history.